Welcome to this episode of the Multifamily Mindset Growth Cast. Not Multifamily Mindset, just the Growth Cast. Presented by the Multifamily Mindset. Presented by the Multifamily <laughs> Mindset. Uh, we're excited. Today we have a special guest with us. We're in our new office. If you're watching on YouTube, this is kind of just a temporary setup. But we're it's here. We, we, we are here in our new office, and we're very excited about it. And we are very excited about our new guest. We have Melissa Forbush on with us today. Round of applause. <laughs> awesome. We're super excited to have Melissa on. She, Melissa is investor relations for multifamily capital partners. She does a great job doing that. That's a that's what I'd say. Thank probably you. your focus is right. Definitely. Definitely. But the amount of work that she does for the multifamily mindset cannot go unnoticed as well. She does so much. For the multifamily mindset and seriously helps this company and all of its students out so much and brings so much value to the table. So we are we, we are we, we, we are excited to have her on today and to pick her brain about some stuff. And I'm gonna just be very upfront with everybody. I leave for Maui in two days, so I'm very emotional. Don't, because I and, don't. And Melissa has become one of my closest friends. Um, through all this, through building this company, so I'm probably going to get emotional Don't. in today's podcast. Jay? But that being said, Melissa, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty easy transition. I, can't even, I love how you're like looking at the I know, floor. I can't even look. How are you? Uh, are you good? I am great. Good. I'm great that you are here because... I want to do at least see you before you go. Yes, no, and this isn't about me. This podcast isn't about me. <laughs> it's about you and all that you do for us. Uh, we also have Dallas, as per usual, to help keep us on track. I'm just going to hang out and be entertained. Pull out some <laughs> pull out some mindset principles for us and some actionable items um, from this podcast. Um, today we want to talk about Melissa, obviously, and the incredible worker and work ethic that she has. But before we dive into that, Melissa, I'm going to ask you, how did you get here? How did you get to the multifamily mindset? Oh, I mean, man. There's, that's quite a loaded it question. It is such a loaded question. In the, I guess in a short, a short answer, how did you, you get know, here? I, my whole life, I have been extremely competitive. And I honestly think that that has what, is what has driven me in so many different areas. And I think that one of the things is I just, I struggled. I felt like something was missing in my life. And... And I needed to feel like I was a part of something or doing more. And and maybe it was because I wanted to just exceed Tyler, be a little competitive. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Show him he could do what he does. <laughs> no, no, that, I mean, genuinely, that's not it. Like, I, I fully support Ty. You guys know that. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But I do. That's, that's kind of how I got here. I never in a million years thought that I would be in real estate. Yeah. Never, ever, ever. I for, was in nursing. For those that don't know, though, you, you're talking about Tyler. I think people probably don't know. That I know. I was going to go. You gonna, are. Yeah. You're Tyler's sister. Shine. Yes. Younger you, sister. Yes. Yeah. His much younger, much more wise <laughs> sister. Exactly. Let's make I sure to, to add that. Yes. Much more wise. <laughs> yes. He's my older brother. I mean, y'all can send your condolences later. So <laughs> I've had to deal with him my whole life. No, but it's been interesting to watch, right? For those of you that don't know, Melissa is Tyler's sister. Melissa is also my cousin-in-law. So as long as I've known wait, Melissa. Wait, I'm sorry, what? F fave? Favorite cousin. Thank okay, you. that's what you wanted. Yeah, you go, <laughs> anything, anything for you while you're on the pod, dude. Um, yeah, so Melissa is my cousin-in-law as well. And she, ever since I've known her, ever since I've been in the family, it's been about six years that I've been in the family now. Mm -hmm. She's always had her hand in something. She, you are a working, you are a worker. You're a worker bee. You love having your hand in stuff. And, you're, and one thing that I've noticed from the very beginning is you're extremely passionate about everything you do. From yeah. when you were doing photography to the switch to investor relations, now with multifamily mindset, you've just been so extremely passionate. And it's, it's definitely something It's definitely something to take out of you and your Thanks, work attributes Jay. is the passion that you have behind it for sure. I've always said that I don't have like a middle, I have a hundred yeah. or I have nothing. Yeah. Either I am a hundred percent in or I'm out. Yeah, I, I don't, and that's a, that's something I need to work on yeah. because there has to be a middle ground. Yeah. Like, man, I, I think for me, my passion originated in emergency medicine okay. and, and then, and that's where I really, I thought that was my calling because I loved it so much. I thought that that's where I was going to be the rest of my life. Yeah. And when I was able to dissect the fact that what I love about emergency medicine is helping people, right. you have people who come in 
you know, into the ER in trauma, it, their most vulnerable, you know, out of control state, pure chaos. Yeah. And I love to hone that in and be calm and be that loving support that they didn't even know they needed. Right. And that's subconscious, of course. But when I was able to to kind of pull out what I loved about that and photography, people hate family photos. Yeah. I, it started out just taking pictures of Bryce <laughs> and his baseball. And so I, I've kind of, that is where I've learned it, my passion is. is yeah. it's, it truly is just helping people. Okay, so now here comes a loaded question. Helping, there, there's so many people to help. Yes. Right? And uh, you and me and Dallas is like this as well. Oftentimes we get our plate full of stuff and we just keep somehow piling on. <laughs> it's things. a buffet. Yeah, yep. because we, <laughs> but a lot of the times it's because we want to handle something or because we want to help somebody out and take it off of their plate. Yep. So I guess the question I want to ask you, Melissa, as you've been so passionate about everything you do and helping all of these people, helping multifamily capital partners and being such an integral, essential part of that company to also being such an integral and essential part of the multifamily mindset. How do you balance it all? And being a mom, like we, we didn't even mention that, right? <laughs> Melissa's a mom of four. Five, Five, if you count my if husband. If you count Bryce, <laughs> I, that's what I was gonna say, but I didn't wanna go there. <laughs> Melissa's, a, Melissa's a mom of four. So she's also dealing with that all the time. You have so much on your plate. So what I kind of like, I think that's kind of where we take this podcast is how do you manage all of that? How do you keep it all on your plate without it? I think that's a perfect question. Yeah. Before you jump in, I think that's a perfect question. And uh, because everybody that listens to this is, is in that same boat. Yeah. Every single person I would assume listening to this podcast is in the exact same boat. They're trying to build a life, but they're trying to build a business in conjunction with that life. And that is a big freaking challenge. It is. And so before, how do you do it? Before, yeah, before you answer, just one extra thing I want to add on there is what you're saying is a lot of the times we're so passionate and we want to do everything. Yes. Right? That's how I am. And I know that's how you are, right? There's all of these things and we're so passionate and we want to help. But there's only so much time in a day and there's, uh, there's so many priorities. So, yeah, how do you go about prioritizing those things and keeping, keeping up with everything? Honestly, I obviously I'm definitely not an expert. It's, it's something I think that we all it, it's a daily battle. We have to intentionally make those decisions to keep that balance continually. But I'm so I, I can't even begin to take to say how grateful I am to have a husband who is so supportive. If he wasn't so supportive, I couldn't do a fraction of what I do. Yeah. And I think that um, because I went through a really dark, I had postpartum really bad with my, with one of my kids and man, I went in such a dark place and he saw the transition. And I think because of that, he, it makes him even more supportive to see, you know, that I'm so, I'm so happy and I'm so passionate about what I'm doing and, and I'm helping students on one side and then I'm helping investors get passive income. I think that because he sees that passion and he sees you know, how I pulled out of that dark phase. I think that that is what helps him be so supportive. But honestly, I have to remind myself, I, when we first started multifamily mindset, you know, yeah. you and I both, I mean, yeah. we were 16 hours a day. Yeah. I mean, grinding and there was a shift. I, one of my, one of my girlfriends, her husband passed away and it was I, I know it's dramatic, <laughs> but it, it was life changing for me yeah. because I went to this funeral and really I was going to support, you know, my other girlfriend and my, you know, my friend, obviously, who just lost her husband. But the entire funeral, the entire, I mean, everything I left feeling like, what am I doing? Like, I'm so passionate about my career and how we're changing lives there. But what truly is what's important here? Yeah. It is family and life is so short. And that was where I really, um, I felt like I was continually like running hundred miles an hour and then burning out. And then I'd focus on my family and then I'd run hundred miles an hour and then burn out and focus on my family. Yeah. And that was a perfect parlay for me to say, I'm going to intentionally make time for each and every person in my family individually. Yeah. Well, and so it can wait. I know you do something on the weekends. It's amazing. Yeah, and the, the reason I'm bringing this up is this, your story right there. Um, you do something on the weekends, you were sharing it with somebody, I overheard you in the office, 
um, about how on the weekends you're you're very strategic about doing something specific that keeps you from getting pulled back into the fire so you can stay in the fire with your family. Yes. What is that one thing that you do on the weekends? I do not touch my phone. I do not open Slack. I do not open my email. And I avoid all my text messages. And that's been really hard for me. And I'm going to get emotional. My yeah. gosh. Um, I feel like you guys are Oprah right Sorry. now. Sorry. Like, how? How did you guys get this? We're just trying to get as good as Oprah. So. It has been a really hard um, decision for me because I love, you know, my friends and my work friends. And I feel like... And solving with, problems for work. And- yes. But I feel like because I've had to make that like decision to avoid text messages. And the reason why is because I know that I can get sucked in so easily. And what, what happens... Key. It is yeah. Knowing yourself. And that's... But it also, it goes back to, I think, you know, priority. And even if that means I'm going to miss a text message or two from my, my, my good friends that are wanting to get together, I have to focus on like... I need like that time has to be dedicated to my children so that I can be present. You know, it's something that Dallas and I talk a lot about is like <clears throat> we do those things that we love mm-hmm. so that it can motivate us to do the work, right? And it kind of we're motivated to do the work so that we can do the things that we love with the people oh. we love. They play hand in hand with each other. Yeah. And it's so important to prioritize and to always remember that, right? When I yeah. asked you how do you do it, the very first thing you did was Shout out Bryce. Shout out Bryce Forbush. You shout out Bryce. I love you, honey. Right? You, I love you. <laughs> you shout out Bryce and say, I couldn't do it without him. Yeah. And then the end, and then towards the end of your answer was, I do it for them. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of crazy to see. You have to always remember that, right? Is that you do oh. these things for the people that you love and around you, but you are able to do the things because of the people around you. So it's totally. super important to remember those things. Dallas and I talk about it pretty often well as, as well as, work life, life, life. Yes. There's not really a separation there. It's really when you start becoming most productive and take on all these challenges that you have is when it's the same. When you Absolutely. realize that they play hand in hand with each other. And to not take advantage. I feel like there was a minute where I was taking advantage of Bryce's generosity. Like yeah. I would, I was, like when we first started multifamily mindset, I was neck deep and I did that because I knew I could. I mean, Bryce was incredibly supportive. Yeah. However, I had like there came a point where I had to say, okay, he's always going to be supportive, but that doesn't mean that I can neglect everything. I have to, I have to not take advantage of him, you know, wanting to support For sure. my moves. Well, For that's sure. this is maybe like not a. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but taking that and paying it forward and letting that rub off on you. Um, is the better perspective to adopt in those, right? When we, when you come to yes. that recognition of like, this person's so generous, this person's so helpful. Yeah, I've caught myself maybe taking advantage of that. But now moving forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adopt that same type of approach. Yeah. Well, you and know? what's interesting is I honestly, I was thinking a lot about this when I was driving home from this funeral and just thinking about like all the things that I need to change and one of the one of the things that I took from that funeral was he would leave the most detailed voicemails. I remember you telling me about this yes. when you got back. Yeah. I mean, leave the voicemail. Yeah. And so, anyways, that was be intentional with what you're doing. Everything. Yes. Yeah. But as I was driving home, I was thinking about just how grateful I am because you know Bryce, I have kind of you know I was in nursing and then I you know did I I, I just have done a little bit of everything. And although Bryce has always been supportive, he's all, I've always been in the position to support him. Right. And recognizing how easily he jumped into that role in supporting me and helping me dissect everything, I'm so grateful that I had this reality check at this funeral because the whole drive home, it was like, I need to mirror that. And I need to make sure that I'm intentionally mirroring that. But it, but it goes beyond that. I think that taking that with every, every relationship you have, I think that with my investors or my friends that check in, like I need to mirror those behaviors. If I'm grateful for an action that someone's doing, I need to mirror that. Yeah, I love that. I love that word mirror. Um, all too often we become windows and we point our fingers out and identify problems that other people bring to the table that complicate our lives. And we dissect them and analyze them. 
and that's incorrect. You know, we talk about error-ridden thinking, and and that is error-ridden thinking. You know, the right way to view life is to be a mirror, to to look at yourself and say, how can I be the solution? How can I be part of the solution for everybody and everything that I come in contact with? And yeah, I could sit and overanalyze and dissect everybody's poor choices that create, you know, sometimes minor issues and sometimes major issues. But what good does that do? Or or just things that are different that may not even cause issues. It just just may be different than what you're doing. I think of a window as like, you know, peeping Tom looking through the window like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. I Instead of going, oh, what am I doing? Yeah, there's two there's two sayings, you know, be be a mirror, not a window. Mm-hmm. And then the other one that I, I heard all the time early on in my career was uh, from from my man Justin Sue. I always reference him, <laughs> but I freaking love this this analogy, and it's be a font, not a drain. You know, like fonts fill things up, yeah. fill things up with positivity, fill things up with solutions. Um, you know, don't be a drain in life. Don't yep. suck all the good out. And you suck all the good out when you overanalyze and judge yep. and, and, you know, point your finger. Um, when you're a mirror, you're a font all day long. I yeah. think that's a good transition because I think Melissa is most definitely a font. She yeah, she walks around a walking ball of joy, of energy, <laughs> of excitement. I think and, what you meant to say is I'm weird as hell. No, it's okay, no, Jay. Just say what, it. That's not what I mean. I meant what I said. For Thank real. You. You, are walk, you walk around joyful, happy, positive, even though sometimes I know you're overwhelmed. Thank even you. though sometimes I know you have so much on your plate. So I guess that kind of transitions into the next question. How do you compartmentalize those stresses? How do you compartmentalize those over those those items that are overwhelming to be able to continue to be a light and a font, how Dallas is saying. How do you, how do you, how do, is it just a subconscious thing or do you have you know, a systematic approach to it? So funny that you, I was literally just having this conversation the other day. So my Avery, my oldest, mm-hmm. my 13 year old daughter has autism. Mm-hmm. When she was little, I was a single mom. I mean, just, you know, working my tail off, trying to survive. But she would be so, I could just tell that her energy would change. And I'd realize, obviously, a while later that it was when I was stressed. I wouldn't vocalize anything, but it was just my energy. And she could sense that. Even when I was trying to fake it, she knew. And I couldn't get away with faking it with her. So from an early early, early point in her life, I had to learn that her health actually determined, her health is impacted impacted, Yeah, by my subconscious stressors or whatever it is. So it, it, it's 100% a conscious decision that I have been forced to make every day. And I'm so grateful. And what I always find myself when I can sense that like I'm stressed or she's stressed because I'm stressed. I always go back to the controllables. Okay, what am I stressed about? Okay, I what can I control in that situation? Yeah. Instead of me sitting and pounding, you know, this whatever that is that I'm stressed about or overwhelmed about, I always have to take a step back. Usually that's in my closet. Yeah. I, you know, remove myself from any distractions, anybody else. I sit in my closet and I literally will sometimes just have a conversation out loud. All right, what Melissa, what are you stressed about for hell's sake? All right, you can't control that. Knock that off. And move on. I can control that. It's how funny can how I we just keep that? going and going and going as adults, though. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I remember working with a group of youth back in the day, and they used to do these—I uh, don't even remember what they called them—like timeouts or something. And it was like supposed to be a positive thing, right? Like I don't think they used the word timeout because it was an negative <laughs> conversation. But um, oh, like when they were stressed timeouts. out, they couldn't recognize. It. They'd be like, "Hey, go go do a self reflection." That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. For ten minutes. It just yeah, but, but, but it's it, like as adults, we become, we get older and it's like, we don't think we need to use those types of tools where it's like, Hey, go get a breather, go for a walk, go disconnect from the situation so that you can reconnect to what's actual truth right now, what you actually can control, what's reality and not these like things that you're building up in your brain. Cause a lot of the times we build it up to be way, way, way worse in our minds than what it actually is in reality. If we would just look to the facts of the situation, it's not as bad. Most yes. things are small things, but we build them up because we overthink, we overanalyze, and yes. we build and it, it up consumes in our brain, you. And it ends up consuming you and you make poor choices the more you feed that pattern. So to be able to integrate something like sitting in your closet, if that's what it is, <laughs> or going for a walk midday, mid-lunch, mid-argument. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've done that with my wife where it was like, hey, we're going to, we're going to put a pin in this. 
I've got to go for a walk. But I think you that know? what's yeah. funny is I feel like there was an, a visual shift in my marriage when like Bryce and I, for the love, like we struggled, dude. It was like, I legit could not be more proud of where we are and what we've gone through. Cause our marriage was not easy. We have, we've had hard times, but there is a visual change in our marriage. And when we finally got to the point where like, man, we are good, like good. It was when we were healthy enough to say mid argument, you know what, babe, I love you. I just need a break. Can we talk about this in a minute? Or I'm so stressed. Can we talk? I just need to like calm down. Can we talk about this later? And that requires a level of humility. 100%. I think what ends up getting in the way is just ego and pride. Totally. Of, no, I have to be right. Yes. I have to be right. And, and with that type of situation, whether it's business or life, that you don't have to be right. And yes. If you could just change your perspective of I have to be right, that there's one right, there's multiple rights. Yes. And multi- it doesn't look the same every single time either. It, it's your, wh- you know, what's again. the end game? What do you want? What's your purpose? Yep. What's, you know, what do you value? What are your priorities? Get to those. Just get to what you value. Get to what your purpose is. Get to what your priorities are. All that other stuff's fluff. And we each have our own truth. So that's, again, one of those things that I, a huge shift in my marriage. We would be on completely different pages. And once I realized, like, oh, that's his truth. Yeah. I have my own truth. Doesn't mean eat either one, but I have to do that. And oh, even... regardless of the problem, I love the hell out of my husband. Yes. He Period. bugs me sometimes when he scares me all day long, but, <laughs> but that I doesn't change. Him. Yes. I love so him. So I'm going to get to that. Yes. And I want to, you know, live my purpose out with him. So I'm going to get to that. But I even think all that, this other stuff's going on. I think the trick is having that same approach with your coworkers, with your friends, with your neighbors, with your acquaintances. It doesn't matter what their truth is. That doesn't affect yours. That doesn't affect your direction, but you still love them. You still respect for who they are in here. Exactly. Yeah. But that's their truth. It's like Jackson said, you don't flip a switch on from work life to, to life work. It's yeah. just life in general. You know, we back when I worked with a big company in Utah, um, it was a bunch of younger you know, people, uh, mid twenties, early twenties. And we used to always teach the principal person over, you know, yes. business person or bur- person over athlete or person over whatever, give the title. It doesn't matter. Give the identity of however somebody identifies themselves, what they should identify themselves overall is who they are and what they're becoming, not just the title of whatever it is they're striving for. And if you put focus there, you will be successful and do the work necessary across the board because it's all it all bleeds into one another. Yep. Then yeah, your your business will be positively impacted, your life will be positively Im- impacted. But there is no switch. You no. we can approach entrepreneurship, business, yeah. re- real estate, whatever it is, um, with this idea that oh, I'm going to be this person here, and then when I get home, I'm going to be this other person. And I honestly, when I first, well, I mean, I it's probably a couple of years ago, I just started to feel like. If and I mean, when you're trying to you know keep your relationships with your spouse, with your children, with your friends, with you know trying to grow a, a business, whatever that business is, at least for myself, I started to just feel like, oh my gosh, I I'm an you guys are you guys are gonna be surprised here, but I'm an extrovert introvert. I'm an introvert, damn it. I love people and I love like being social, but I have a wall. In yeah. fact, my family teases me because I literally would be like, oh, yep, yep. Five o'clock, hit my wall. (laughs) But it's, but again, it's, that has been a big learning curve for me because in, as you're, as you're growing any business or developing any relationship, it can be overwhelming and you can start to feel like, I do not have, I don't have the energy for this. At least with me, my introvertness, that's a word, sure sure of it, (laughs) would come out and I'd be like, gosh, I just don't even want to have a conversation. So the shift for me was I don't need to worry if I'm authentically myself at all times and I am not trying to please this person person or trying to please this person. This is who I am. No apologies. This is me. And because I have that confidence, even though I really sometimes don't have the confidence, I know that if I'm uniquely, genuinely myself, everything else is just going to come into play. Yeah. So I I don't, I don't, it's not like I walk around thinking I need to be, you know, I need to be doing this and, oh, I need to you know nourish this. No, I I focus on me. It's great. Something I've thought of um, from the beginning. So kind of swinging it all the way back around 
we'll close it out with Jax, but he said, you're a worker, B, you're a worker. You Ever since I've known you, you're a worker. And uh, that's that's probably the most important actionable I think I would be able to pull from this whole conversation is that's something that all of us should tie our identities up in as being a worker. You know, working in relationships, working at business, you know, the, the whole story of the prince met the princess or, you know, the business owner met the other business owner, they partnered and they all lived happily ever after. That is completely false. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Nobody the, buys the that. The way that she's been told yeah. in the stories is that they worked happily ever after. Yeah. And, and growing anything great, a life across the board, including your business and a family and exp- everything, it requires an immense amount of work. And that work Ugh. can be joyous. That work can be so amazing and, and, and a positive experience. I met a guy when I was 19 years old. His name's Steve Pulver. And he, I remember it was the hardest working day I'd ever had in my whole life. Ever. I was dying. I was having to speak a language I didn't know on top of teaching things I didn't know. And he was like, dude, and I, we just grinded. And he was just so happy. He was so happy the whole time. He worked harder than any other individual I'd ever met. And I was like, man, I want to be like him. And I said, dude, that was a long freaking day. Like, we worked hard, you know? And he said, yeah. He's like, one thing I want you to make sure that sticks with you forever is, wasn't it fun? Work can be fun. Work should be fun. Nobody said work ever can't be fun, right? right? And, yeah. and I just remember that clicking with me. And I always remind myself on those hard days, like, dude, you're working. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. Like have fun with the work and work hard. And again, tying our value or valuing being a hard worker, identi- you know, speaking of identity, if you could tie your identity up in, in one really solid thing, it would be I'm a hard worker. I like well, to work. And not to not to plug the growth guide. Yeah. But I think that, that is the the trick is when you are intentionally noting your progression. So that you can t- have something tangible to go back and say, I'm because there are days where I'm mentally exhausted. A blueprint for that work. Yep. And I find myself thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just so tired. I just want to play in my garden. Like, what am I doing? Why am I working so hard? And then I flip through my, go- my growth guide and I think, I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself. And taking the time to recognize how far you've come in whatever area, whatever, even if you know, remind you yourself why you're working hard. Yes. I think that that's when you can say, oh, I do. Like, I, I'm so glad that I've been working hard. Yep. Because if we don't do that, then it really is just like, what if I, what, if, what do I have? Yeah, here? If you don't have an aim for that hard work, it is frustrating. But when you yeah. have an aim for that hard work, there is nothing more gratifying in life. So many gold, so many golden nuggets to pull out of this. From get you a spouse that's going to support you. There, you said so many things. There's a so best many, friend, a, like whatever it is. So like, many, there's so many. There's so many. There's so many golden nuggets to pull out of this episode. I know that I got a ton. Thank you, Melissa, so much for taking the time to be on with us, Dallas. Thank you so much for your wisdom and your input as well. If you're wait, not, wait, wait, before you close. Yeah. Can I just say thank you for? Jay, you've been <laughs> literally my right hand man. Thank you. I don't know what I would do without you. Thanks. Sincerely. Super kind. I I have said many times that I I feel like as I as you know our business has grown and we've just gotten crazy, my friendships have and they just get further and further and further away because you gr- are growing, right? Yeah. I feel like you have willingly stepped into all of those shoes and have literally become like my confidant, my my supporter. Like, thank you. I love you so much. Same. Jay. I feel the exact I, same way. I love you. I love you too. And I'm pissed at Maui for taking so- the best. <laughs> <friend>. <laughs> no, thank you so much. That means a ton, and I feel the exact same way. I have one request. Yeah. If you don't, every damn time <laughs> <laughs> you have a shaped ice. If you don't say cheers to Melissa every friggin' time, <laughs> Poor little snow dude, I out. will haunt you. <laughs> Poor little you for the <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, this ice nuggets for Melissa. <laughs> no, thank you. That's such a kind thing. And this is this is exactly what Melissa does. She makes everybody around her feel incredible. So thank you. Thank you. I feel the exact same way towards you and towards Dallas as well. I'm I ain't saying goodbye here, so. Yeah. <laughs> we won't catch Dallas in his tears. No, uh, I am a tough no. guy speaking of identity. <laughs> no, I'm no, but thank you. And thank okay. you so much for taking the time to be 
on the podcast. There's so many things you've done for the company, for me. It's been insane. So I couldn't thank you enough. Thank you. So thank you. I love you as well. Um, thanks for tuning into the podcast. It got super a little emotional, a little sentimental there towards the end. You but mean it got real? It got, it got real, y'all. It got real. <laughs> um, if you're not following us, please do like, subscribe, wherever it is that you're listening. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Peace.